So I, um, I, I think that UFO reports, in my opinion, are a hell of a lot more credible when they're seen uh, by many, many people. You of course. Know? I mean, and and I, you know, I mean, it's not it's not that as though the ones out there that are that are you know solo, where some guys out in the field he reports seeing something in the sky. You know, I I'm like that. You've been like that. You know, and it's not that it's maybe less credible, but it's more believable, I suppose, when you have a, ma a, ma a mass sighting of UFOs or and or aliens. You know, right. Uh, but anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into that, I want to I want to mention again that we have a new group over at Facebook, and it's called the Black Lotus Discussion Group. And I'll drop a link to it in the in the uh, uh, description at the bottom. Uh, but what we are, uh, we talk about the things that we talk about here uh, on 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 our YouTube channel, and uh, and you guys can get involved with it as well. So I think it's really kind of a cool little thing. I am. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, check us out. Um, all, yeah, like I said, I'm going to drop a link and just click on that and click join. And uh, we're pretty quick to approve people. So uh, anyway, let's get into this today, man. Um, so I think the first mass sighting we should probably talk about is uh, that one that happened in L.A., uh, Los Angeles back in like I, I I think you had mentioned it was back in 42 42 right yeah. uh, February of 1942 to be exact uh, it was about 3 16 a.m. and the Coast Guard started firing everything they had at massive lights above LA hmm. hundreds of people saw it it was reported in the newspaper um, did radar catch it I'm not sure if radar actually caught it or not, uh, if they actually released that information or not. Huh. But um, it was seen by many, many people. They, at first, they thought it was going to be an aerial barrage from uh, Japan mm -hmm. because of the war. Right, right. And even after this incident happened, Japan said, no, we never, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're, we're all cool now. But no, we didn't send anybody over there. So... Um, <clears throat> Afterwards, the secretary, uh, Frank Knox, who was secretary of the Navy, said it was just basically a false alarm, hmm. that it must be something that happened, like a weather balloon. Well, was that ever confirmed that it was a weather balloon? It was balloon never thing? confirmed that it was a weather balloon. Um, a lot of people said that it was just reports to cover it up. But uh, later on in 1949, <clears throat> excuse me, the Coast Guard... Uh, Artillery Association, they said it was a meteorology balloon also, and that because of the tension of the war is why it escalated to what it was. Okay. okay. I mean, yeah, I can see the paranoia <clears throat> happening, you know. They uh, dispensed over 1,400 shells at the air. Wow. Wow. So it wasn't just a little incident. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. But then later again in 1983, the U.S. Uh, Air Force history, they said it was just war nerves. And again, they went back to the weather balloon now and saying that, yeah, that's what happened. It was just a weather balloon. Well, I don't understand why they always go for the weather balloon. Do they have photographic evidence of this? Well, the it, it, picture it, 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 you're showing behind us is uh, basically the same picture that they're showing on the newspapers. Okay. But you can't see anything but lights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a real well. I mean, can can can, they, can you see lights in the photograph like here, like these little uh, orbs? No, you can see shapes though. They look could. like there's a shape shape there. Huh. Uh, it's actually a larger shape. I just think it's kind of strange that the that uh, everybody saw this, and even the military lost their little minds. I mean, I understand the war paranoia that makes a lot of sense, um, but. You know, I mean, were there were there reports from citizens? Reports from citizens, reports from military. Everybody saw something, so it wasn't just that there there was definitely something there. Yeah, yeah. Whether it was a weather balloon or a UFO, we don't know. Well, right. And I wonder but, if there was it was ever explained away as some sort of meteorological event. No, you know, it was always a weather balloon of some type. Really? Is they never went for the atmospheric? You know. Uh, what do they call that? Like swamp glass and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But what I thought was interesting, there were five deaths actually from this incident. Oh, I imagine. Um, a couple of them because of car wrecks of people not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Because all of a sudden you see all these lights over LA. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody went mad. Yeah, yeah. And, and with all of the I news. mean, plus with all the spotlights that were on them and everything, and I'm sure people were like, well, what the hell is that? Oh, right. bam, you know. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I, th- I think it's interesting that this is one of those uh, incidents that has been kind of lost to history. You don't hear a lot about it. I know, no. a, I know a movie was made about it. I never got to watch it, but... You don't hear about it, and it's oh, it's been uh, pushed under the rug as just a weather balloon incident. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Again, what's with weather balloons? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, even if it was a weather balloon incident, I think it shouldn't be lost to history uh, simply because of the, uh, the mass panic that happened. You know, I mean, similar to H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, I mean, that, that's something... Like, that shouldn't be lost to history, I think, you know? And you just don't hear very much about that incident, you know? That's kind of strange. Um, But there was another one where that took place uh, back on two consecutive weekends, uh, on uh, July 19th and 20th and July 26th and 27th back in 1942. And this happened over the White House. And that really freaked out the military because, you know, uh, you at think? the time, yeah, at the time we were at huge odds with the Russians. You know, we were in the middle of the Cold War and all of that. And so, I mean, they kind of lost it. And it's speculated that Project Blue Book and the military at the time knew that these were alien craft, but they were trying to promote it to the public as be, as being as being Russian so as a scapegoat uh, 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 craft, and the Russians came out and said, "Hey, that's not us. It's not us. I don't know what that is, but that's not us." So, I mean, there was a lot of a uh, juggling there going on, but anyway, this whole thing was known as the Big Flap or the Washington Flap, and so the incident. I mean, and I don't know if you guys have been watching Project Blue Book, the new the new uh, uh, version of Project Blue Book. Good show. Good show. Uh, Ralph and I recently watched it, and they and and the season ender was about this these incidents, and it what actually took place was very very different. Of course. And so, like for instance, on 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 the uh, the first incident happened on uh, July nineteenth and the twentieth at nighttime, and what happened is that uh, uh, apparently the radar there at uh, Andrews Air Force Base picked up. Um, seven objects that were uh, hovering over the White House and the U.S. Capitol, both. And so what they did is, you know, Andrews Air Force Base immediately scrambled some fighter jets uh, to investigate it and possibly take it down. And the pilots uh, described what they said was they were they were orange fireballs with a tail. And they said... You know, they, what these things did is they played cat and mouse with the pilots, you know. So every time they would get close to one of these things, it would take off at an incredible speed. Amazing. And then, or turn into a big blur and blind the pilot. And, um, yeah, and, and so, but the funny thing about this is that it was all explained away immediately as stars or meteors. Meteors don't change direction and right. run away Right, and meteors you. don't, I mean... Or change I mean, speed. And stars aren't going to show up on radar, you know? And meteors, exactly, they don't change direction, and they don't go really slow and then suddenly take off at 7,000 miles an hour is yeah. what they, they had clocked these things. That's, I mean, that's an incredible speed. And the pilots tried to keep up with them, but then they would they would lose them. You well, know? yeah, because we mean, don't have anything that goes that fast. Yeah, even now, you know? My God. Um, so then the incident stopped uh, after a while, and it stopped in like the, the uh, early morning hours of the uh, uh, 20th. And so for the next week, they were trying to explain this away and trying to uh, uh, blame it on the Russians, like I said, and all that. And so things started to die down in the public, you know, because, I mean, the, the newspapers were all over this. Oh, I bet. But things started to die down in the public, and the next thing you know, the very next weekend, on, on the 26th, apparently at, uh, I might take some notes here, 8.15 uh, p.m. on the 26th, uh, a pilot and a stewardess on national air, on a national airlines flight, uh, they were both apparently in the cabin, and they observed uh, these strange lights that were above them. And so they immediately reported, but the, the immediate response by uh, the National Airport, uh, uh, Andrews Air Force Base, 
um, was 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 uh, was reporting that their radar centers, both the radar centers, were tracking multiple objects. And so immediately, what do they do? They dispatch uh, the fighter jets again, and the same thing happened. They could not two catch weekends them. in a row. Two weekends in a row. Yeah. And this wasn't just observed by the people in the military. This was observed by people on the ground as well. Wow. And what? And like I said, they were described as orange fireballs. You know, and so weather balloons. <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always <laughs> it always comes down to a damn weather balloon. Um, but then in uh, 1997, I, and I I remember this happening. I remember the multiple news reports about this right. thing. And uh, what this is about, this is, this is about two events, actually. They're kind of separate events, but they happen on the same night. Um, and it, this is commonly known as the Phoenix Lights or the Lights Over Phoenix kind of thing. And, um, but the first event happened, actually, it started here where we live in uh, Henderson, Nevada, uh, very close to Las Vegas, if you've never been, been here. Um, and this triangular object was witnessed starting here in, law, in, in, in in Henderson and it went all the way about 300 miles um, uh, from I'm, try, I'm trying to find, find go over my notes here um, yeah they they, uh, um, they they were they were seen here in Henderson and then throughout Arizona and then it was also uh, seen in uh, Sonoma uh, that that so state, many states state Mexico yeah 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 so yeah I mean it, it something was there and they tried to explain it away as possibly um, aircraft that was flying in formation but the people that observed this thing uh, well first of all some of them uh, reported it being a solid object uh, like a like a wedge a, a triangular object um, and but nobody reported any aircraft sounds like helicopter sounds or airplane sounds or anything like that and so i mean uh, evidently it was totally silent um so there's that and then um in uh in phoenix um they they saw what every I mean, thousands of people witnessed this thing, and it was lights that appeared. And as they appeared, it seemed to be making out a shape, an object in the, in the sky that they think they estimate the thing to be about a mile wide. Wow, wow, right? You know, um, <clears throat> and silent and totally silent. And uh, people witnessed this thing, and it, 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 it was it, it was up there for a good hour. And then suddenly the light started to go out. So the military is saying it was possibly flares, you know, like these slow falling flares. Well, you watch the video of this uh, this thing and they never descend. So how slow falling can it possibly be? Right. You know, I mean, and then, I mean, and, and then, like I said, I mean, after a while, they just all went out. Like they were done with whatever they were doing and they left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um. I mean, I, you can look this up, you know, and, and see the video that I'm talking about, and you can you can you can see for yourself that the, the, these lights never do descend, and they don't look like flares at all. Yeah, I've seen some videos of people that show, uh, oh, look at what we see some weird things in the sky, and you look at it and go, yeah, that's a flare, because all of a sudden the way it lights up and then it falls, like you said, and leaves a little bit of a trail, and it just falls, and then it just like kind of goes out. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of smoke or something. Yeah, um, and then. Evidently, back in 2007 and 2008, uh, it was thought that this thing w was coming back again. And, but the uh, Luke Air Force Base claimed uh, what this was. The, the fighter jets had actually deployed some flares. And, um, uh, so that time they used flares as an excuse or well, they actually did? Well, no, they actually did. Okay. Apparently, yeah, they have record of it. Um, and then, but, uh, so that happened in 2007. And then in 2008, uh, there was another occurrence like this. And it was discovered that some civilian had uh, released uh, flares uh, via helium. Oh, and okay. So, and so they go up instead of down. Yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, um, I mean, that, that V-shaped craft that was reported from here in Nevada all the way through down to Arizona, that was even reported by the uh, then governor of Arizona, uh, uh, Fife uh, Symington. And so even he saw it. You know? yeah, a reputable witness. Ah, yeah. You know, I was mentioning earlier that, that I, 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 think, I think these mass UFO, UFO sightings are uh, not so easily discredited. But I also think that when somebody who's reputable like that or an astronaut or a pilot who are all used to seeing these kind of things right. and they report them, then it's got to, you, get, you have to kind of scratch your head and go, well, you know. Especially it's... somebody in the Air Force, an Air Force pilot. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. know what a ship looks like. They know what they're supposed to be looking mm -hmm. for. For enemy, other enemy planes and stuff, mm -hmm. they know when they're seeing something that's not not normal. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, well, you know, speaking of air pilots, in uh, 2006, Flight 446 was getting ready to fly from uh, Carolina to Chicago's uh, O'Hare International Airport, mm -hmm. and uh, an employee all of a sudden noticed a dark gray metallic craft hovering over the gate. Mm. Now. Not only did he see this, it ended up 12 United Air Force Airline employees saw it. Plus, there was a few witnesses outside of the airport were watching it, too. Happened right at 4.15 p.m. So it was in the middle of the day. This big object sitting there floating. So it hovered there for about five minutes. And then it joined, shot upwards and just disappeared. Wow. Wow. You see, that, to me, is pretty reputable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, radar. You've got... Um, all these people seeing it, and then what do you have? The FFA saying it's a weather phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I remember now. Now, Blue Book had uh, been closed for quite a while, right. you know, by that by that time. But Blue Book, I remember most of their explanations were was it was that it was either a weather balloon or it was a weather phenomenon yeah. or it was Venus or swamp gas or something like that. But in the middle of the day, you've got numerous witnesses mm -hmm. of a flying metallic craft right right how so could how, that be? How, how can it how can it be a weather phenomenon in the middle of the day like that well you it'd know? have to be like a mirage but even when you see a mirage you're seeing it in a certain direction and if you move around you notice it disappears mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if you're seeing the all these people who are in different areas of the airport seeing the same thing mm -hmm. that's not a mirage yeah yeah you know there's a um now I can't remember the term, but it's uh, it's it's used to explain like uh, uh, mass hysteria, and so when when people have these mass sightings like this, they see something in the sky, and all it takes is for one person to go look a UFO, and suddenly everybody sees a UFO. You follow what I mean? Right. So I mean, wh whether it is actually a UFO or not, you know, um, but that's how people's mindset our tribal mindset works like that but, but i th how does that explain like the radar situations at the same time or in this case you've got people on the ground people on the tarmac and people in the airport seeing it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you have people in three different locations seeing the same thing right how is that a, no way is that going to matter and situation. they're nowhere near each other right, right. so exactly. you know they're not going to each other Ooh, who look at that yeah. they all just see it yeah yeah yeah. You know, that happened again with uh, in uh, Stephenville, Texas. It's a little one of those little one horse towns. Most of the town saw these lights and these things kind of like the Phoenix lights. Mm -hmm. um, they described it up in the sky. That was in uh, 2008. And uh, there was a pilot out there and he said the things were going 3000 miles an hour again. We don't have anything that goes that fast. Right, right. The Air Force tried to say that they had F-16s flying around about that time, but an F-16 doesn't go that fast. Doesn't go three thousand miles an hour. No. Yeah. The town and all all the town agrees that we didn't have anything in our power that could be doing the maneuvers well, and doing that. How, how was how, how did they report these things? What, what did they? How did they describe them? Uh, just like little lights in the sky. Like called, okay. So and uh, you've seen an F-16. You, uh, you can know. You can see the difference between a, an F-16 and a light in the sky. Right. Very different objects, you know. <laughs> so, and speaking of that, you had an incident. Yeah, it's lights in the sky again. Um, in fact, we were watching uh, uh, Project, show, Blue, Project Book. Blue Book, and there was actually an incident they showed that, like, literally gave me chills because it was just like my incident. 
we were having a block party. Uh, this is in Claremont, California, and we lived on a cul-de-sac. So we had the cul-de-sac shut off, and we were having a block party for uh, Fourth of July. And it was getting dark. Um, it was almost almost dark, totally. We were bringing everything in. Uh, everybody was outside gathering up their tables and chairs and everything else. And all of a sudden, we noticed five lights up in the sky over the mountains. And they were kind of like this formation where they were just jiggled around. Okay. And they were moving around and very odd maneuvers. But all of a sudden, they all got together and made a V, like a bird would. And they swooped down over the street and just took off. Just kind of flocked. Just shoot, yeah, flocked like a bird, like it would be birds. Now, of course, it wasn't birds because they were bright red yeah, lights. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, very interesting. And there had to be at least 20, 25 people out on the street watching it. Wow, that's crazy. We all saw it and stuff. We reported it to the Air Force. So mm -hmm. I think it was the Air Force we reported it to. Some we reported it that we saw something. We didn't know what it was. And Ralph and my wife and myself had a, our own little mass sighting. Yep. Um, not too long ago, um, and and we talked about it on uh, uh, Black Lotus, and what it was, it was a kind of a cigar shaped, uh, silvery thing in the sky, and it had a black ball that was uh, rotating. Uh, rotating around the circumference of the thing, and yeah, not and, like it was attached, though. and and it wasn't going fast, it was going slow. Um, but it wasn't like floating like a balloon would float because my immediately my immediate thought was uh oh some tourist down on the strip lost a balloon, lost a balloon yeah. but the longer we watched this uh, there was no way it was a balloon no and it uh, moved it didn't move up it moved sideways sideways just slowly over our house and yeah I did. then it got about I don't know how far but when it got to the end it kind of just went up and disappeared mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I don't. I mean, it could have been a balloon. I'll, I'll give it that benefit of the, the, the doubt. But I. It would really, have had it been caught into a wind. I really doubt it. I really doubt strange. that that was the case. You know, I mean, it was it was some sort of craft. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, and the, and the funny thing about this is that, um, when we saw this, Ralph had mentioned, "Oh, look, there goes Janet Airlines overhead." You know, and, right. and Janet Airlines, in case you don't know, is the uh, way that the employees get in and out of uh, Area Fifty One. And they go right over our head, and he just mentioned that. And I, as soon as as soon as he said that, I saw right next to it was this thing, and it was going much slower than the plane, right. you know. And I'm like, what the hell is that? You know? Yeah, but that was just it. What is that? It wasn't floating. It wasn't. It was definitely flying. It was definitely moving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a horizontal, not vertical pattern. And here's the weirdest thing about this: all three of us, my wife had. Her phone, Ralph had his tablet, and I had my video camera. Not one of us could get this on film. No. Not one of us. Could not see it. It, it, it. The strangest thing. I mean, and I'm trying to zoom in on the thing, and I just, I couldn't get it. It wasn't there. So, I mean, if, if the cameras weren't picking it up, how come we were able to see it? I don't know. Yeah, strange, man. It's not like yeah. we were drinking or smoking or anything that night. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Weird stuff, man. But uh, anyway, let's get out of here for the day. What do you say? Sounds good. Um, so again, uh, we have that group over at Facebook, and we'd love to have you if you're into these topics, and I'm sure you are. Uh, and it's called the Black Lotus Discussion Group. And again, I'll drop a link in the comment or the in the uh, uh, description below. So anyway, until next time, keep thinking, keep your eyes open, and question everything.